So when we're collecting data, we have two big things that sort of happen. We need to take our ra a random sample, and then we need to do random assignment if we can. So let's think about what these, these things mean. And this, come, this is a figure out of the lock textbook. So was the sample randomly selected? If the answer is yes, it's possible to generalize from the sample to the population. If the answer is no, then you cannot generalize from the sample to the population. Now, I want to mention here that this is a bit of like an asterisk because a lot of research does not involve random samples. And so people have to make an argument then why they can generalize. So if I go in there and I collect a convenient sample, I have to argue why that sample that I collected, even though it's convenient, represents my population, allows me to talk about and to generalize to my population. That's a hard argument. But random, random, uh, randomly, uh, random, blah blah blah, randomly selecting people, random sampling that allows you to generalize. Okay. Now, was the explanatory variable randomly assigned? If the answer is yes, then you can make causal claims. If the answer is no, then you cannot talk about it. So remember, random sampling is going to be. will allow us to generalize. And random assignment allows us to talk about causation. I can assure you, I will, I will ask you about this over and over and over again throughout the semester. You'll see activities on this and these things will appear in the quiz. <clears throat> so let's think about um, another, we'll do one more example. We'll go through. <clears throat> so can vitamin D supplements help people lose weight? So first of all, how might we design an experiment to answer this research question, whether or not vitamin D supplements help people lose weight? Well, the first thing we should do is we should collect a random sample of participants, right? We should randomly sample people so that we can generalize to our population. And so what we might consider doing is one of two things. We might randomly assign half of the participants to the vitamin D, and then the other half might receive a sugar pill, which, which um, would essentially be our placebo. And then we would compare weight loss between the two groups. This is what's known as a randomized comparative experiment. And many of the uh, experiments that we, we, we will talk about are randomized comparative experiments. Another option might be to randomly assign half the participants to take vitamin D first, then the sugar pill, and the other half would receive the sugar pill first, then the vitamin D supplement. Then we would examine the individual differences in weight loss between the two treatments. So essentially in this case, uh, and this is what's known as a matched pairs experiment. Essentially, in this case, um, you'd be acting sort of as your own compare. So we'd only look to see, did you gain weight or did you lose weight versus did a group gain weight that had uh, that had or not gain weight? We're looking at lo losing weight, right? So did the group that received vitamin D, did they lose weight versus the group that received the placebo? Whereas in, in the uh, matched pairs experiment, we're looking, did each individual lose weight when they received the vitamin D versus the placebo? So for both designs, <clears throat> we shouldn't tell the participants or the researcher which treatment they received so we can make a double blind. And in fact, we could also make a triple blind. Hey, let's not tell the statistician. They also don't need to know what it is. We can code the data so that, it, so that we don't know. <clears throat>